Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 14. Hey, as always, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, go to my college website and there it is, Business 210 Chapter 2, download that. Hey, uh, we just in the last couple of videos built a frequency distribution and a column chart, but now we want to talk about a uh, relative frequency distribution and a percent frequency. I'm actually going to reduce the size here, reduce the size here a little bit, reduce the little size, all right. Actually, we can make this even smaller because I have word wrap there. If you click in that cell and go to the home ribbon, you can see that's word wrap. That'll allow the words in one cell to uh, be on different lines. Now, relative frequency. What does relative mean? It means, hey, this 58 in relation to this 200, what is the proportion or the relative frequency or the probability. I'm going to click in this, highlight the whole range here and in the light colored cell at the top, I'm going to say equals one cell to the left divided by the total. And we need to lock it, so we'll use our F4 key. Since I've highlighted all of the cells and there's a formula in the top cell, when I hold Control and hit Enter, it will populate the whole, the whole range with the formula. If you don't believe it, click in the last cell and hit F2. No way. One cell to my left, a relative cell reference, divided by that locked 200. I'm going to click Escape. Now I want to click down here, and I want to check to see if I did it right. I want to add them all up. The keyboard shortcut for auto sum is Alt equals, and then one. Enter. There it is, 1. Now, relative frequency is very important. And you want to be aware that there are three common terms, relative frequency, proportion and probability. Later we will use probability and we'll build frequency distributions like this or be given them and we want to calculate our probabilities. These are mutually exclusive categories. Uh, there is no overlap here. If you counter Yanaki, it can also be here. So when we have mutually exclusive categories and we calculate a relative frequency, it better come out to be 1. Again, the, uh, these are proportions or probabilities, and why are they so important? Because uh, you can use these numbers to uh, plan for the future. Like, what is the proportion of wood that would be used by the Yanaki? What is the proportion of wood that would be used for the Carlota? You could use these probabilities or relative frequencies to plan uh, manufacturing schedules, so all sorts of things. Now, let's talk about percent. I'm going to highlight the whole range here, and in the cell in the top, I'm going to say equals relative cell reference 1 to my left, and because I have all of the cells highlighted, I'm going to hold Control and hit Enter. Oh, wait a second. I, uh, that was pre-formatted. Let's go um, and use our keyboard shortcut for format cells, Control 1. Notice I have all the cells highlighted. Control 1. It'll give me my format cells dialog box. I meant to have this as general, and we were going to apply percentage. I want you to apply that general and then click OK. That's the way it should come out. And I want to make a very important point here, and this is dramatically different than the modern business statistics textbook. Uh, they have you calculate percents this way. You highlight the whole range. Here, and in the top cell, you say equals this relative frequency times 100. And then I'm going to control enter. And I'm going to prove to you that that is absolutely ludicrous. That is, there is zero point in the age of computers in Excel to ever do this. This convention is left over from the past, especially in accounting uh, and, and, and statistics, too. Don't do that. And I'll prove to you in a second why not. But first, uh, let's go ahead and see how we're going to do it. Once you get your relative frequencies in Excel, you just add a format. So I'm going to highlight the whole, all this whole range right here. Control 1, and I'm going to go to percent. It's got two decimals. I click OK. That is how you want to do it. Now here's why. When you have um, these percents, and lots of times later in uh, this statistic series, we're going to be given a percent or a proportion and the total. And we will be required to find out how many, um, what the frequency was. Here's why you can't do that. 
If you have your number set as the number 29 here, watch this. I'm going to click in this cell, and this is what you never do. That's why it says no there. Equals 29% times the original 200. What? No way. That's why you don't do it. I have no idea. This Our textbook is so awesome. I am clueless why they would teach you how to do that. OK, here's what you want to do. Instead, you want to always use the percent format based on um, the relative frequency. I'm going to click in the cell. And when you're asked later in this video series to calculate, hey, we know that 29% of 200 boomerangs sold were the Yanakis. Please tell us how many Yanakis were sold. Equals this percent formatted, which is just 0.29 times this 200, enter. And then you get your 58. So that's why you always want to do it this way and not this way. Now, why in the world do we have to do percent frequencies anyway? The reason why is because when we um, are making calculations, we usually use proportions or probabilities. When we're talking or writing reports or articles, we use percents. So here, we can recognize the same patterns as the frequency distribution. But here, we can use these numbers for planning. You can use these numbers, too. But in general, percentages, we use those for talking. So it's much easier if you're writing a report or an article to say, hey, 29% of the total boomerang sold were Yanakis. Only 7% of the boomerang sold were sunsets. So the reason we have percentages is because it's much easier to talk about them. Now, i got to show you something very important about percentages. There's another amazing reason why we convert frequencies to percentages or proportions, for that matter. I'm going to scroll down, way down here. And by the way, I have these notes here. The, the observations and the patterns we observed are written there for you to read. But here it is. I have um, a total here. One company sold uh, one item, um, two of these, five of these, and eight of these. And then here's the big, huge company that sold 200 of them and 450 and 1,600 of them. So what I did is I added them all up here. And then I calculated the relative frequency, you can see there, and per added the percent format. But I did the same thing here. Look at that. Now we can compare these two companies, the little company and the big company. Notice they sold 6% uh, of their total, 6.25% of their total represented by one, whereas 200 here represented 6.15% of their total. If you know accounting, you often express financial statements in percentages because then you can compare small companies and big companies. So that's another great use for percentages. So that's a little bit about relative frequency, how to calculate it, percent frequency, how to calculate it and what not to do, and some uh, useful applications. All right, see you next video.